Hello, I'm Chris Hernandez. Thanks for joining us for the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The City's Neighborhoods and Housing Services Department won a $100,000 competitive grant from PetSmart Charities. City staff will use this grant to spay and neuter more than 850 pit bulls and pit bull mixes. The program focuses on areas of the city known for having a high number of strays and pit bull impoundments. The city hopes this project will make the community safer, increase the number of pets licensed, and reduce the number of stray dogs. Hundreds of city employees participated in a fire drill at City Hall recently. The fire drill helped prepare city employees for an actual fire or emergency, as well as considering how they would help evacuate City Hall visitors. The city's public safety team is also using the drill to discover ways to improve training and safety at City Hall. During the drill, the fire department responded and police officers blocked traffic to help make the exercise as realistic as possible. During an actual emergency, community emergency response team members would be stationed in stairwells to help people who might have trouble descending the stairs in the 29-story building. Well, first of all, I want to thank all of the city employees for their participation and cooperation in today's successful event. It shows you can evacuate a large downtown office building and you can do it timely and professionally and make sure that everybody is out safely. So this is the first of a multitude of tests we're going to take city employees on just to make sure that we're ready and able and capable when a real uh, situation develops. So again, I want to thank all of our employees for taking the time to participate, cooperate, do it with an, uh, enthusiasm, with, with, with a smile on their faces, and uh, hopefully it's just the better part of precaution and we'll never need to do it. So thank everybody again. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. Throughout the year, city facilities host a variety of exciting and unique events for all interest that add to the Kansas City experience. November is a month with many events for residents of all ages to choose from. The American Royal Cutting Horse Show will take place at Hale Arena from November 6th to the 8th and the United Professional Horsemen's Association National Championship will take place at Kemper Arena from November 12th to the 16th. Don't miss these exciting national championships. Tickets are available at Ticketmaster.com or at the Kemper Arena box office. For more family fun in November, the Ararat Shriners, who have called Kansas City home for 78 years, will return to the Municipal Auditorium from November 14th through the 17th with lions, tigers, elephants, and the circus acts that make the annual event so exciting and fun for all ages. More than 30,000 residents are expected to attend this year's circus. Tickets are on sale at Ticketmaster.com and you can go to kcshrinescircus.com for additional information. Start your holiday season on November 22nd at the Tree Lighting Ceremony. City Lights, the annual downtown holiday lighting ceremony, is also the official kickoff of the Salvation Army's Christmas campaign. The City Lights display encompasses Barney Alice Plaza and several nearby buildings, including the Kansas City Marriott downtown, which features spectacular computer-generated holiday images across its 22-story facade. These are just a few of the many events the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offers our community. To learn about even more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. minutes to score. The green bags 
are five points up here, or they're one point in your, your uh, team's alliance section. Can you get that loose? Okay, strip. Your, your wrist is stripped. Okay, Greg and Marlboro are up next. Um, let's see, I guess you go right over here. In the blue. Greg's in the blue, Marlboro's in the red. Phil's getting set up, so wait till she gets done. So, drivers are ready. Get set. Go! You don't, you're not just in this for yourself and your team. You can actually help other teams out, and that's noted, that gets a, a, an achievement award. So remember that when you go into competition. You don't want to just, like, oh, we're hiding it, and it's a big secret. It's not a big secret. Everybody's helping each other out around there. And stuff. So that sportsmanship is real important. Mark, get set, go. And this would be basically what they call a skill challenge, and they actually do have those. And we're going to probably try to have one at South East this year. Okay. Where the team don't go against the team. And you just see how many points they can score. They need national rankings. Uh, Nine, eight. Go back over here. Come back over here. Come back over here. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Okay, that's the end of the match. At this point, before you get your robot, hold it, hold it, don't get your robot. But in an event, you have to wait until the judges go around and look and see what all scores count. Uh, one thing that can get you disqualified or put out of a, a match is if your robot is intentionally hitting another robot. Uh, this, this is not battle bots and stuff. You can get ejected out, you won't get no points for that round. If you do it a couple of times, they can put you out of the whole event. The thing is, this is about you guys with the, uh, who part who participating in the program. That we hopefully we can build up on this. Yeah. But with with, uh, with uh, George Sisters, we plan to move it forward. And so, George, again, thank you so much on behalf of Parks and Recreation. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. When KCPD recruits graduate from the police academy, they are ready for patrol, right? Well, not exactly. They begin patrolling with a field training officer and the FTO is responsible for another 10 weeks of training. One of the popular FTOs is Sebastian Hanriot. I've been an FTO now for four years. Um, I've had about 14 new officers that I train. When they come to us, most of the time, they don't know how to get into patrol car. Uh, they don't know how to uh, check the video or drive a light and siren, answer a call, talk to the victim, suspect. They have an idea on take a report. By the time the end of break-in, they have what we call a solo status, which means they can be a police officer on their own on the street. They have to apply on the street what they learn in the academy. And that's our job to make sure they do it and they do it well. Today was a good day when you have a recruit and they are actually applying what you're trying to teach them and they can do it on their own without any assistance or help or any critique. That's a good day for us. What does recruit Wayne Lewis think of the training? I'll say Hannah Roth's been a great FTO, been very professional, he's been a great trainer. I think an FTO that's really good at what he's doing will keep an officer safe <clears throat> and will teach him the skills that he needs to uh, survive on a day-to-day -day basis. He's a great pastry chef from what I hear. Can't wait to try some of his stuff out. Sebastian Sergeant Mike Glass. Generally a good FTO is an officer who has a lot of patience, um, uh, good knowledge of department policies and procedures. Uh, very good knowledge of the way things are 
dead out in the street and in the field. Um, and the ability to teach another adult and to be a leader and a mentor. Sebastian is a very good FTO. I think the reason why people like him is because he has patience and he listens and he also treats people um, you know, with respect. He treats his recruits with respect and he generally cares about them and wants them to succeed. Recruits ride with two different FTOs as a probationary officer. After 30 weeks as a recruit, 10 more weeks as a probationary officer, our officers are ready to begin serving the citizens of Kansas City. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Looking ahead, the city will host two curbside leaf and brush collections this fall. Collection for residents in the South Zone takes place the weeks of October 21st and November 18th. On their regular trash day, residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb. Collection for the Central Zone is the weeks of October 28th and December 9th. North Zone pickup will be the weeks of November 4th and December 2nd. To check your pickup day, visit kcmo.org trash and click on Leaf and Brush Collection. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner and click on the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.